Hi, my name is Dr. Hamlin and I am a person living with type 1 diabetes and today I'm going to answer the question, why does my blood sugar spike when I do strength training and drop when I do cardio? And this is a really awesome question and truthfully one that I wondered about for quite a while growing up. And it wasn't until I was able to understand the difference and what my body needed for different types of workouts that I was able to really start getting a handle on managing my blood glucose during my workouts. Um, and so to start with, we'll go over why does your blood sugar spike during strength training in the first place? And this is a really common thing and it's because our metabolism needs different um, forms of energy, different forms of energy support while we're doing different intensities. And so strength training is what we consider a high intensity workout. Another type of exercise that could fall into this category is sprinting. So not like kind of a, a slow going long jog, but a full on sprint running as fast as you can what we see is that our body understands that it's going to need quite a lot of energy to get through that. And it sends a signal to our liver where we hold onto stores of glucose called glycogen. And our body is actually able to break down that glycogen into glucose and pump it into our bloodstream so that it's there going through our, our body to our cells in order to be used into energy quickly. Now, obviously with type one diabetes, we don't make that insulin um, increase when we're also putting that glycogen in. And so we see that spike on our blood glucose um, charts or our CGMs because we're not able to mobilize that from the bloodstream into the cell like someone without type one diabetes would be able to do. Now it's hard, it's hard to really manage that if we don't know how much our blood sugar is gonna spike during a heavy leg day of strength training or a, a sprint session if you're in uh, track in high school or in college. And so it can be hard to predict because we don't want to take insulin to cover that spike ahead of time and then accidentally not get it and cause a low. So it creates nuance there. And I really recommend there is a way to perform high intensity workouts with type one diabetes that's effective for blood glucose management, talk with your healthcare provider. It typically takes a lot of trial and error before you get there. Um, but we do see spikes with that type of workout. Now, the way that that looks like in my life is that if my blood sugar is already running a little high or it's increasing, so let's say it's maybe 115, but I've got a, a double up arrow, might not be the right time to just go and do my heaviest weights um, on squats and deadlifts, right? Like that, that might, I could predict and see that that spike that's already bound to come, you know, from my up arrows could be made worse by lifting heavy. So I might reverse my workout that day, do some cardio first until I'm stable before I lift those heavy weights. Things like that, just really understanding and having the knowledge base to say, how do I wanna structure my timing around this can be super helpful in creating those more leveled blood glucose pieces. Now, if you're finding that every time you're lifting weights or every time you're, you're running fast and doing sprints, that you're getting those high spikes, I do recommend that you come up with a new plan because I absolutely think it's possible to prevent those. Now, the other side of thing is cardio. And what we see with cardio or cardiovascular exercise, and this includes things like running, dancing, swimming, um, doing anything where we're more of a steady state exercise. We also increase our needs for insulin there. And what happens is we actually get an increase in insulin sensitivity. So our body says, hey, we understand we're gonna need more energy in order to keep fueling these cells and these muscles that are working. And so we're gonna pull it out of the bloodstream at a faster rate um, per molecule of insulin. And so we, we are able to, our insulin that we take is able to move more carbohydrates from the bloodstream into the cells during that time of increased insulin sensitivity, increased need. And so we may find that if we've got a lot of insulin on board when we head into a workout, that we go low much quicker um, because that insulin that would normally work for covering our last meal is gonna work more effectively causing that low. Now, when that happens, the best thing that we can do is just plan ahead, you know, understanding if I'm gonna go on a jog after dinner, I may wanna take a little bit less insulin at my dinner meal so that I'm less likely to go low because I'll have less insulin on board. Now, again, this is a nuanced thing and everybody's individual and it does take trial and error on the cardio and too. So it's important to work with your, your diabetes professional to kind of figure this out, but know that if you don't nail it the first time, that's okay and that's kind of normal is that it takes a little while to understand. Um, and then, you know, with cardio, when we do see those lows, it's not usually because we didn't eat enough before. And I used to think that like, 
Um, I, in high school, I was on a dance team, and if I was low during practice, I would think, oh, I didn't eat a big enough snack before the beginning of my dance practice. But really, it wasn't the, the amount of carbs I needed to fuel that, it was too much insulin and not enough snack. So I could have, instead of just eating more and more before my practices, learned to just take less, less insulin um, at my meal before that. Or if I was on a pump, lower my basal rate um, or be able to do what I needed to shift the amount of insulin on board. Now I didn't understand that and so I would just eat tons of carbs to get through my workouts and that was fine, you know, and got me through. But I found now that it's much easier for me to just figure out how to balance things by decreasing the amount of insulin I have on, on, on board. Now, if we decrease our insulin too much, we can absolutely see rebound highs. And that's why it's important that you work with a healthcare professional to get the timing right for you. But know that when we are setting up a workout routine, having a combination of that strength training or that high intensity workout with the cardiovascular uh, exercise does this really cool combination where we're getting the spike from those heavy weights or those sprints and we're also getting that increased insulin sensitivity that can cause us to go low from the cardio and it does this kind of balancing effect and so i find that if i'm at a place where i can structure my workouts where i'm doing a little cardio and a little strength training every day or every workout I find that I can get such better balance than if I were to just do like a really, really heavy strength training day and then go on a really long run the next day. And so that is a tip that I found for my life. Now it's not the only way to exercise with diabetes. Truthfully, you can do any type of exercise that you want to make work with diabetes. It's just about figuring it out. But if you have you know, full control over your exercise routine and you're looking for a way that makes sense that is less kind of nuanced, combining the two is a really powerful way to do it. And it's kind of fun too, because you've got more dynamic kind of movement throughout your, your workout each, each session. So this is answering that general question. If you have more thoughts about this, please you know, submit those questions below so that I can answer them and make sure I'm describing this in a way that makes sense. But understanding that your body's gonna react differently to different types of workouts is the first step to understanding how to manage blood glucose during exercise. If you are interested in my other workout information, I've got an exercise series I will link below. Um, in addition to some just kind of regular synopsis uh, of written kind of quotes about what I'm talking about here. So if you want an article, you can reflect back to that'll be linked below as well. Um, and if you'd like to work with me, I'm seeing patients in the state of Texas right now. So feel free to check out my website. That'll be in the links. Thanks so much for listening. And please let me know if you have questions.